Morning, and welcome to another rant. Now, this week's rant is sort of kind of about this thing I've got in front of me and this thing I've got my arm on. So, about three years ago, um, when I decided I was going to use the front room um, for playing and doodling and whatever, I went out and bought one of these. Okay, that's a Boss BX 16 mixer, 16 channel. Um, boss mixer, very popular with keyboard players back in the 80s, which is when this thing was manufactured. Um, and it's got a telltale thing because it's got one of these weird, I don't know where you can see that, there you go, you can see that on the camera, um, power supply interfaces that supplies 22 uh, 21.5 volts, which um, to be honest is a pain in the bum if you're trying to look for another power supply to, to, to run this thing on, you have to build a custom uh, interface for it because you can't find the plugs anymore or I can't anyway I've, I've looked and looked and looked but maybe somebody else can anyway this mixer has served me pretty well up until probably about I don't know, six months ago when certain channels um, on here started playing up in terms of you couldn't use uh, channels 1 and 2 as left and right because 2 decided they didn't want to play anymore so you ended up using channels 1 and 3 as left and right and you lost channel 2. Um, and I think it's it's basically because it needs a damn good service and I just don't have the time to take this thing to pieces and service it at the moment. Um, and I've been sort of thinking about what I was going to do with this and I've got videos that are stacking up uh, which I want to record but I can't because this is not playing ball and I, at the moment going down to the studio record stuff is not not really easy um, I'm bringing stuff back here to record so I have bought a new one which is this which is the Mackie Pro FX 12 12 channel mixer well, I say 12 channels. Actually, if I'm brutally honest, what it is, is you've got uh, one, two, three, four, I think it's six um, mono channels and then six stereo channels, which works out quite well for recording synthesizers and keyboards because most of my keyboards, apart from the really, really early stuff, are actually stereo feeds. So having stereo inputs is a great advantage. So why did I buy a brand new mixer? as opposed to buying another second-hand mixer. Well, the honest truth is, these things aren't very expensive anymore. Many years ago, you would pay quite easily for a decent mixer, five or six hundred quid, because anything below that probably just wasn't worth having in terms of the way the circuitry was put together and things like signal hum uh, and a whole raft of other bits and bobs. So here we are, a number of years later, and mixer prices have dropped and the functionality of mixers has gone up and the quality of the components, well, that's probably a bit iffy. Um, they're still sourced from some dodgy place in the, in the Far East, but the general overall quality of these things has gone up. So I thought to myself, well, I can buy this for a couple of hundred pounds. Why would I go and buy a second hand again? I don't particularly want a fancy mixer for doing the stuff I'm doing. In fact, really what I'm wanting is a mixer that sends a fairly dry signal out to... Um, the recording device and this thing seems to fit the mark and it's in the couple of hundred pounds mark so let me get this out of the box I've got the Stanley knife to, to boot to dump. so I shall uh, now get this out of the box I'm not going to bore you with me unboxing this thing so what I'll do is I'll get it out of the box and then switch the video back on Okay, just to show off the mixer, I've uh, set the mixer up on the table, got me out shot, um, just so you can see what it's all about. So if we look at this mixer, and as I said, it's, it's a $200 or £200 mixer, and being pounds normally equals dollars, it's probably a $200 mixer. Um, if we start from left to right, we've got one, two, three, four, and I think I said six, uh, six a minute ago, four mono inputs or more, four mono line inputs um, all with nice free full travel uh, faders and then we have uh, one two three four uh, stereo inputs so four plus 
the two channels on the stereo, which is eight, gives you your 12 channels that this mixer can handle. And as I said, this is useful because a lot of the uh, synthesizers that I'm playing with have stereo feeds out. So we've got a, a, a good combination here for using those. And then we have a, a effects uh, return and a standard return. We have monitors and we have the main outputs. So that's the faders. If we go along the top, we can see we've got mic inputs on the first uh, six uh, channels, or these will come in as a stereo channel, I assume. Um, these are all uh, preempt. Then we have line inputs for uh, the first four channels plus inserts onto those channels. Uh, and then we have uh, mono uh, left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right for the other four channels. We have the standard return there. We have the mono send and the FX send. Uh, we have the main unbalanced outs. And we have uh, provision for a foot switch to control some functionality and phones in. So effectively, we've got a good sweep there. Each channel has, um, or each fader group has effectively a high, mid and low EQ on it. Uh, auxiliary send and FX send and left and right balance. So pan pots at the bottom here. So that's effectively the mixer control. At the top here, we have the gain settings for each one of the, mix, uh, the fader sets. Um, over here, we have a uh, stereographic equalizer. Uh, and this area here is a set of built-in effects, um, 0, 01 through 0, 016, of uh, different effects that this unit can generate onto the signal itself. USB through, um, I think, and I ha I'm not sure of that at the moment, but I think that is effectively putting the USB um, if you're pushing stuff from the computer onto the mixer, um, allows it to uh, play out on one of the channels. Not sure what that what channel that is. I suspect that might be on this channel. Um, and break, which mutes all the channels. And then we have a tape level um, recording, which is to do with these tape inputs and outputs up the top here. So that's the mixer in a nutshell. And if we go and look at the back of the mixer, which I'll just push up to camera like so, uh, we can say we've got standard um, 240 volt IC. See this works combined voltage 100, 240, 50 or 60 hertz, um, standard on off switch. And then we have two balanced outputs on the back, which is useful if you're uh, using this in some sort of PA situation. And then that's the USB socket for connecting to the computer. So as you can see, this will be a vast improvement over my current recording setup. So what else was in the box? What other goodies did you get in the box? Truthfully, not a lot. You got a power cord. You got what looks like not a bad length USB cable, but still probably not enough. I always think with these things, you need at least three meters of USB cable. Um, and then we have the instruction book. There you go, there's the instruction book. Um, this is the sort of second from bottom of the range. There are five mixers in this Mackie range, starting with the ProFX 8, which is an 8-channel mixer, rising through the 12, the 16, the 22, and the 30, um, whereas the 30 is, of course, a 30-channel mixer. Um, the main difference is the actual number of mono channels because it looks like to me on each one of these um, different versions they all have four stereo feeds and then the rest are mono, effectively mono channels. Um, so for what I'm doing, effectively this 12 channel mix that I've bought is probably just about right for everything we need to do. 
Um, and then, of course, in true uh, universal booklet style, uh, the whole thing is written in every language you can think of in terms of European language. So there's French, there's German, there's Spanish, Espanol, uh, most of which I can't understand. Um, and then a very simple instruction set about how this mixer works. Um, what's very interesting actually looking at this is the fact that on the 22, the 30 and the 16 the balanced outs are actually on top of the mixer, not underneath it. Um, but at the end of the day I don't really care. I bought it for a reason. That reason is so that I can improve the quality of the audio recording for the videos. And I think in that instance it will probably work extremely well for me. So. This week's rant, not really a rant. So, as I said to you, if I go and reach down here for the old one, what's going to happen to this? So, I think I've said on the channel um, in the last few weeks that I will be moving from this place, which has been my home for the last five years, um, to somewhere new. And I don't quite know where I'm going to move to at the moment. Um, the place I had in mind has fallen through. Um, the joys of uh, of securing property. <laughs> um, so I'm I'm out there looking, but sometime in the new year I will move, and I will make sure that when I do move, I move to somewhere that has provision for a workshop facility of some description, because I have so many videos that I need to do relating to fixing stuff. I mean, I've got. Um, you know, duff keys on my D70, I've got duff keys on my FS50. All of these need to be repaired and it just takes time and space, um, which are two of the things I really kind of struggle with in, in this little property I live in at the moment. So I'm going to go and get some, I'm getting somewhere bigger, um, considerably bigger actually. Um, so that should solve those issues. Um, which will allow me to actually then probably do a video of me actually servicing this. Um, I've, I've had it to pass. I've had it to, to pieces in the past and had a look inside it, so I know what it looks like inside. Um, it is going to be a an interesting one to service because everything is basically glued to the front panel, which is glued to the the inside of the case. Um, so it's going to be an interesting one to take to pieces and put back together again. But that's what will happen to this, and hopefully that will get rid of all the issues that I've got regarding f Channel 2, for argument's sake, which has got a problem on it. Anyway, that's all I want to say for this week. This will be going into the recording rig from next week. And hopefully the audio issues that I've been having will go away. Till next time. Bye-bye. If you liked the contents of the video you've just seen, please give it a thumbs up. It just helps the YouTube algorithm with its selection process. If you want to leave a comment, please feel free to do that as well. Um, down below somewhere should be the ability to do that. Um, I do try to respond to all the comments that are raised on the channel. Uh, sometimes it takes me a few weeks because of what I'm doing and I'm getting more and more and more comments and uh, questions raised on the channel so it just takes sometimes a little bit of time to do a bit of research. If you want to be notified when I put more rants, mailbergs and videos about this sort of legacy tech and even modern tech on the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell icon and you'll be notified by YouTube when stuff happens. I try to publish at least two times a week, sometimes more, sometimes less. Until next time, bye-bye.